Yeah, in this video, I'm going to discuss about this shapes of methane, ammonia, and water molecules according to the Vesper theory. Uh, this particular topic has been pulled out from the degree first semester syllabus, that is chemical bonding chapter 10. The whole chapter has been discussed on my YouTube channel. And if you like it, please do like, share, and subscribe my channel. Yeah. Coming back to the topic, when we look at this methane molecule, uh, we know that uh, first look at this, what is this Vesper theory? Uh, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. So as the name suggests, this, is, this theory is totally based on the presence of the valence electrons, that means lone pairs or bond pairs, and the repulsion in between these valence electrons. So, so the name valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. So the, to the theory is totally based on the repulsions in between the electrons which are present in the valence shell that is the outermost shell of the atom and uh, the repulsions may be in between the bond pairs and bond pairs, lone pairs and bond pairs or uh, lone pair lone pair repulsion. Yes. When we come to this carbon, we know that it's electronic configuration. Since atomic number is 6, it is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2. So, outermost shell, that means the valence electrons, the total number of the valence electrons are 4 electrons. And there's one formula, the steric number, which says that, so half into the number of valence electrons of the central atom and plus the number of the bonds, that is a single bonds attached to the central atom, plus or minus the charge on the molecule. So if there is a negative charge, this add the charge to the to this number. And if there is a positive charge, just subtract that number. So when we come back to this carbon, there's a central atom, the total number of valence electrons are four. And the number of the bonds which are attached to this central atom here is carbon. Uh, there are four hydrogens which are attached to the central atom here. So the number of the bonds are four. As there is no charge, this ignore this, okay? So this is, comes to be the four. Since the steric number is four, which means that there are four orbitals on the central atom, these can be either lone pairs or bond pairs of electrons. They can be attached to the uh, other, I mean, by means of bonds to the other atoms, or they can be just as a lone pair. In this case, this carbon here is attached to four other uh, hydrogen atoms, which means that there is no lone pairs of electrons and there is only bond pairs. So, the geometry we can say that it is tetrahedral here. Since if the static number is four, the geometry is tetrahedral. And when we come to the shape of the molecule here, yes, when we come to the shape of the molecule, uh, now, just now we have seen that the number is four, which means that the geometry is tetrahedral here, tetrahedral geometry. And shape is also tetrahedral in this case, since there are no lone pairs. Just remember that the shape and the geometry are both the same if there are no lone pairs. This is the geometry, right? Since there are no lone pairs here, shape is a uh, and geometry of the molecule, which is the tetrahedral. And in the tetrahedral arrangement, the central atom is attached to four other uh, hydrogen atoms and the bond angle is 109.5. So this is the shape of the methane molecule uh, according to the Vesper theory. And when we come to the ammonia here, the central atom is nitrogen in this case, this where the ammonia. atomic number is seven here, the electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p3. The valence electrons which are present in this case are five. So according to the formula, it is half into the steric temper is equal to the number of valence electrons are five and number of the bonds to the central atom here is it is attached to three other hydrogen atoms so the number of bonds which are present in this are three as there is no charge so half into eight which is nothing but four so in this case also this number is four 
which means that there are four orbitals around this central atom that is nitrogen. But when we look at this, there are three bond pairs which are present. That means it is attached to three other hydrogen atoms and one, one lone pair which is present on the nitrogen. So out of these five valence electrons, three are involved in the bonding and one lone pair, the rest two is uh, remained as a lone pair on the central nitrogen atom. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Then now, when we look at the shape, uh, I mean, as a steric number is four here, now three bond pairs and one lone pair here, the geometry of the molecule is arcane tetrahedral. So the, te the geometry of the molecule, lo both lone pairs and bond pairs are to be considered. But when we look at the shape of the molecule here, observe this carefully, the, the lone pair which is present on the central nitrogen atom totally belongs to this only central atom, only central atom that is a nitrogen atom in this case, only and only, only under influence of this nitrogen atom, this lone pair of electrons. But when we come to this bond pair of electrons, they are in between this nitrogen and hydrogen. So they're under the influence of both these atoms here in this case. So they are rigid. So in other words, they are rigid and cannot move so very easily. But this lone pair of electrons, which are the, under the influence of only this nitrogen atom, are delocalized, which means that they can move to a certain extent around this central atom, so occupy more space, in other words, occupy more space around this central atom and try to repel this bond pair of electrons. And we know that the lone pair, lone pair repulsions are more than lone pair bond pair repulsions uh yeah which is more than bond pair bond pair repulsions so in this case there are only one lone pair so which is we can just can just ignore uh in this instance that means in the uh, molecule of ammonia in this example but there are lone pair bond pair repulsions there is one lone pair and there is a repulsion in between the lone pair and this bond pair of electrons okay this bond pair of electrons there is a repulsion in between this lone pair and other three bond pairs of electrons. So as a result of this, uh, we know that this lone pair bond pair repulsions are greater than bond pair bond pair repulsions. So these lone pairs will try to occupy more space around this central atom. As a result, the angle is slightly reduced from 109.28 to 107. So it's slightly reduced from 109. Uh, 0.28 to 107.48 here. And when you look at this uh, shape of the molecule, in this show, shape of the molecule, only bond pairs are to be considered and lone pairs have to be ignored in this case. So just if you ignore this lone pair of electrons, how does the shape look like? Like this. The shape if you look at this, if you ignore this lone pair of electrons or orbital here, the shape looks like a pyramidal. So it's nothing but pyramidal in shape. Or trigonal pyramidal or pyramidal. Yes, when we look at the shape of the molecule of this ammonia. So the geometry is tetrahedral here and the shape is pyramidal or trigonal pyramidal with the bond angle of 107.48 where it is reduced from 109.28 to 107.48 because of the lone pair bond pair repulsions in the case of ammonia. So according to the Vesper theory that is valential electron pair repulsion theory, there is a repulsion in between these lone pairs and bond pairs of electrons. As a result of this, the shape is pyramidal or trigonal by pyramid, I mean trigonal pyramidal. So when we look at the geometry, if the steric number is four, it's always the tetrahedral geometry, but the shape depends upon the lone pair of electrons or the presence of the lone pair of electrons which decide the shape. This is the main application of this. Uh, yeah, Vesper uh, theory, yes. Uh, so, yeah, same thing here. Uh, when we look at the shape of the molecules, we are ignoring the lone pairs by looking at the shape of the molecules. It's looked like a pyramid. 
so it's a pyramidal or trigonal pyramidal according to the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory and when we come to this water molecule in this case uh, again the central atom is oxygen here so when we applying the formula the steric number of this is oxygen is atomic number is 8 so its electronic configuration will be 1s2, 2s2 and 2p4 where the number of valence electrons are 6 here. So number of valence electrons are 6 plus number of bonds which, which are attached to this are 2 hydrogens here. So 2. Again the steric number is 4 but out of these 4, uh, I mean 4 orbitals which are present on this central atom, 2 are bond pairs with where it is attached to two hydrogen atoms and two other or lone pairs. So we can understand this way also, out of the six valence electrons, two are involved in the bonding with two hydrogen atoms and two other as left as the uh, lone pairs, I mean four other uh, valence electrons are less, left as two lone pairs on this central hydrogen atom here. Now, again, the geometry is tetrahedral here because uh, the steric number is four, so the geometry is tetrahedral, where the number of orbitals on the central tetrahedral, where the number of the orbitals on the central oxygen atom is four, which means that. And when we come to the shape of the molecule here, since there are two lone pairs and two bond pairs which are present on the central atom here, uh, said that uh, the lone pairs are of the influence of only the central atom. In this case, the two lone pairs which are present on the oxygen here are under the influence of only this oxygen atom and the bond pairs are under the influence of both oxygen and hydrogen atom. So these are uh, rigid and it's say at one place, but these two lone pairs occupy more space around this central atom. So as lone pair, lone pair repulsions are uh, more than lone pair, bond pair repulsions, which are more than bond pair, bond pair repulsions. This is the logic where, why we can say that lone pair, lone pair repulsions are more than uh, lone pair, bond pair repulsions, which are more than bond pair, bond pair repulsions, because the lone pair will occupy more space around the central atom and they try to repel the bond pairs more. So the bond angle is still reduced from 109.282, 104.8, because non-pole and pair repulsions are more than lone pair bond pair repulsions, which are little more than bond pair bond pair repulsions. As the result of this, the bond angle is still reduced from 109.28 to 104.5 because of the presence of these two lone pairs. So the geometry, we know that it is tetrahedral because the steric number is four, but what is the uh, shape of this? So I told you when we are coming to the shape just ignore the lone pairs, only bond pairs have to be seen. So only when we are seeing this bond pairs here, it look like a bent molecule or V shape or V shape or angular. So it's a bent molecule. It's looked like a bent or V shape or angular. And when we look at the geometry, both lone pairs and bond pairs are to be considered. But when we look at the shape, only bond pairs are to be considered. Ignore the lone pairs of electrons so we can arrive at the shape of the molecule. So shape of the water molecule is bent or bent shape or V shape or angular according to the Vesper theory. So this is what is about the shapes of the molecule. So it is V-shaped uh, according to the Vesper theory. And yeah, uh, when we look at all of them and we come to the methane, all of them are tetrahedral geometry is tetrahedral, yeah, tetrahedral electron pair geometry. But when we come to the shapes of the molecules, this is tetrahedral here, that methane molecule because no lone pairs and with presence of one lone pair, it's looked like a pyramid. So it's a trigonal pyramidal. And when we come to the water molecule where there are two lone pairs which are present on this, but steric number is four in all these cases. 
So it is angular or bent or V-shape. And when we come to the hydrogen fluoride, here there are three lone pairs which are present on the central fluorine atom. This fluorine is nine, uh, yeah, nine. So two and seven out of this seven, one it is utilized as bond pair and three are lone pairs here. So because of this presence of three lone pairs of electron, it is linear in shape. So all of them are tetrahedral geometry, but the shapes are different depending upon the presence of the lone pairs on the central atom. In each case where methane is tetrahedral, ammonia uh, is trigonal pyramidal, water is angular and hydrogen fluoride is linear. So according to this theory, we can decide or uh, the shape of the molecules. So this is the main application of the Vesper theory where it could explain the shape of the molecules to a certain extent.